for the first time in quite a while, the head coach of BYU women's volleyball and those ninth-ranked Cougars, Heather Olmstead. Coach, thanks for hanging out with us on game day. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. This is a really cool setup for the match tonight, and I've been plugging throughout the show that it's more than just the match against Portland. It's also the breast cancer awareness match and month for that matter. And this one, because of recent experiences that you've had in your own family, is hitting close to home. And so we just kind of like to get your thoughts on why this match is so meaningful tonight and why you're wearing that pink sweatshirt and what goes into yeah, all that. Yeah, thanks. Not only are we excited to be back home, to play Portland, but we get the opportunity to raise awareness for breast cancer. And so in June of this past summer, my dad was diagnosed with DCIS, ductal carcinoma in situ breast cancer. Um, and that was a surprise to all of us. So that happened in June. Uh, the next week they got him promptly in and he had a, a partial mastectomy. And so while they were in there, they also took out some lymph nodes and checked uh, to make sure there was no spreading and everything looks good there. So this match does have special meaning, a little bit different meaning, and it's, it's, it's education for all of us to provide awareness for not only female breast cancer, which one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer, but less than 1% of men, which is one in a thousand, will mm -hmm. also be diagnosed with breast cancer. And we need to be talking about it and get that out there so people are aware of it. So this is a, this is a big deal, obviously, when anyone gets cancer, but We've known Rick for a long time. He's a notable guy in the community as a former coach of Karch Cry and other teams, right? Yeah. Um, and and referee, and he's the dad of the winningest uh, male and female NCAA college coaches. So how's he doing now? Yeah, he's doing awesome. He's doing great. They didn't uh, feel like there was any need for chemo or radiation, so he's on a, a drug, um, Tamoflexin, I think it's called, and it's an estrogen blocker because breast cancer is fed by estrogen, which men have. Um, and so he's on an estrogen blocker. He's doing well. And so he's, he's excited to also spread awareness and, and talk about his story. And one of the most important things about his story is that you need to advocate for yourself, for your body, for what you're feeling. He didn't have a lump. Uh, there was no lump there, but he did have some symptoms, which was um, discharge out of his nipple, which yeah. was bloody. Oh. And that's, you know, that's a sign that you need to go to the doctor. And so being able to be aware of those things and, and, and go fight for yourself and for your health is important. And, and that's what he did. And so uh, early enough that he, he's feeling good, um, but we need to keep talking about it. And so tonight's an opportunity to do that for sure. I didn't know some of those numbers you mentioned, especially the 1% for men yep. and like estrogen. I don't, yeah, awareness is super important. So what else would you advise? I guess, you know, a lot of this conversation is obviously about women. It's super important. Yep. But what this part is about men. What have you learned that you would also want people to know about this? Yeah, I think just what we said, that, that men can get breast cancer and that, um, you know, if something's off with your body, you yeah. go go to the doctor, let them check it out, be, be self-aware and and be cautious about that because health is everything. Yeah. We need our health to just to live and to, to be healthy and happy. And so that, that's what I would say. It's, it's an opportunity for us to talk with our team. We have obviously women's volleyball and that's a, that's a high stat. And we've got 19 girls on our team. That's something we should be talking about, not to, to scare anyone or be afraid of, but to educate our, our women in our program and, and around the country and people that are watching in the community about breast cancer in women and in men. And, um, you know, we're blessed that my dad's doing well and, and, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's random. He has six daughters and, you know, so there's there's hereditary things that you've got to look at as far as now we've got to be extra cautious getting our screenings and doing those things as well, which is mm. another thing you've learned is is look at your hereditary genetics and get some testing done and six daughters and my dad's the one with breast cancer right now and we're obviously very aware of it now going forward. Sure. And we just put up uh, some other symptoms and, and some other things right. to be aware of on the screen. And I mean, just even the fact that men are not totally... Uh, immune. safe and immune yeah. from yeah. this. Yeah. Like that information alone is very critical. Um, man, your your parents, both your mom and your dad, have gone through some significant bouts of adversity. What have you learned from them as you've watched them handle these these things as they've, as they've gone throughout life? Yeah, I've just learned they've had great faith throughout all of this. Just the faith um, that they they have every day and you know, in the gospel and just in, in getting up every day. And I mean, exercising is huge for our family, exercising, diet and health. I mean, dad's, my dad was a health teacher in high school. And so um, being healthy and not only mentally, physically being aware and um, just having great faith as you live your life and, and, and things are going to get hard. Like no, everyone has issues. And so we've just got to to get up every day and do our best, go to work and, and just be the best versions of ourselves, regardless of what we're going through. So pink tonight uh, will be on uh, display. I, I got. I'm going to change it up a little bit because oh, male breast cancer is a little blue pink. So is okay. it? Yeah. So if you, I, I'll be. I'll be 
repping both. Okay, well, now I'm changing okay. my wardrobe right yeah. now in my mind. So is it like okay. a light blue? Yeah, is, it is. Yeah, like you can Google blue. it. Yeah, okay. it's, it's just a combo. And again, it's not very well known, but um, if I can bring a little bit of awareness, you know, love it's it. going to be great. 100%. I yep. oh, love that. Heather Olmstead is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, before we move on to the match and start to preview what's going to happen against Portland tonight, uh, let's discuss how your, your team is, is handling this opportunity to raise awareness as well. What can we look for tonight when they hit the floor? Yeah, they're going to be warming up in some dig pink shirts. Um, they're excited to, to also create awareness. Um, they'll have some ribbons and, and just the conversations it's, it's allowing us to talk about, you know, who, who in your life have, have you known or have that's affected by this and, yeah. and open those conversations and be okay with talking about the symptoms and going to the doctor, those things that for young kids who are 18, 19, 20, this is, this is relatively somewhat new to them to, to have people in their life that are affected by cancer and such. So they're, they're young, they're young kids, but they're, they're growing up fast. Mm. Yes, they are. Uh, and now let's talk about less important things, uh, like the volleyball season. Yes. But but you you guys are doing so well right now. <laughs> number nine, just the one loss on the road at number two Pitt, who's an incredible team. Maybe we'll see them later. Who knows? How is this team? In August, you're big on like, we haven't figured out who we are yet. Do you have a good sense of who you are at this point? Now that yeah. you're in a conference play? Yeah, d absolutely. We're learning more and more about ourselves every day. Road trips help that for sure. So last week was awesome to be able to go play a tough Santa Clara team in San Francisco. Um, we and call we, that the Shane Tai. Yes, trip, we had right, we had know. lots of homecomings for people, you know, Gretchen, Gretchen Shane. Yep. Yep. So we had such a great time getting to know each other and, and, and we battled. And so I know you guys talk about our sets and I didn't even know that stat, the whatever, because every set for me feels like <laughs> yeah, Emotion. so I'm like, I don't even know that that's true. Is that true? I feel like we've lost. But, you know, that's just the coach in me that needs to appreciate how well we're playing and, and the girls really are putting in the work. And, and so still learning who we are. We get to go on the road next week, um, but we're excited to be at home to play Portland and Gonzaga and, and see what we're made of. Yeah, it'll be fun uh, once you get through these matches at home to uh, watch BYU go on the road, LMU, San Diego, the West Coast Conference. And I know the BYU is transitioning into the Big 12, but the West Coast Conference has been a fantastic landing spot and a very good volleyball conference for BYU on the women's side. Absolutely. They, not only do they have great players in the West Coast Conference, but they have great coaches. And so every night you know you're going up against coaches that know what they're doing and know your weaknesses. So you better know your weaknesses because other teams are going to exploit them. So we've got to be open and honest with our team. Hey, this is where we can get a little bit better, 1% better, right? Conference talk, better. we love that. Yep. Uh, Michael Dunn, it was amazing talk. The old and, boss. Uh, I know, I, was, yeah. I love seeing him up there in general conference, but uh, we're, we're excited to just keep working on our craft and, and get better tonight. By old, I don't mean his age. I mean former. <laughs> I want to make sure Clip it off, that. send it to him. The super old guy. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, Whitney Bauer defensively, we love talking about this during the matches. She does something that doesn't uh, get known. It changed the Utah match, which, by the way, the Utah win continues to look amazing. They keep getting these top 15 wins. It's like, hey, that's helping the resume. Um, she gobbles up so many tips. Mm -hmm. Like, she is the ultimate waitress setter. You know what I mean? Like, she's just having an incredible season. Is that something you taught her? Did she come in with that skill? Have you developed that skill? Like, she's so good at that defensively. Yeah, she, she puts a lot of time into developing that skill set of defense, her eye work, and being able to see the sets, being able to see the, the attacker's rhythm. Are they gonna tip? Are they gonna hit? Are they going line? So she's put a lot of time into that. Uh, I think she's, she every day spends time on it and she's open, she's coachable. She wants to, to hear feedback from us. So she's, she's put the work in and she's, I think, the best setter defender in the country. So I'm proud of her. That's pretty awesome. And she doesn't turn 20 until November. Like, she's <laughs> yeah. a teenager still. Like, her maturity after reclassifying, not having a senior, has been pretty fun to watch. Yeah, she's she's definitely uh, evolving into, obviously, you know, a great leader, and, and she's taking control and command of our offense. I mean, we're, we're third in the country in hitting percentage, and that's a lot because of the way uh, not only our passers are passing, but the way she's distributing the ball, and then our attackers taking smart swings. You got a roster littered with stars and not just that i think a theme that's developed is that they're coachable stars and that's what makes a special group uh we cannot wait to watch them tonight against portland live on the boa tv app of course it is breast cancer awareness month we're raising awareness for breast cancer for men and women we appreciate you coming in to do this with us today we're so glad that rick's doing well thank you guys i appreciate it